is the Tad Show. So speaking of WWE, uh, the Bray Wyatt. Uh, I think there was some uh, Twitter exchange uh, with Matt Hardy from TNA. Had a little heat. Yeah, Matt Hardy. I guess it was Monday night, right after the uh, Complex spot had aired on Raw. Tweeted something along the lines of, "Oh, it looks like uh, this is getting interpromotional." So wait, we have we have these tweets for the screenshot. Yeah, here we, we've got a Matt Hardy's tweet. Let's put that up on the video when you get a chance, Brian. There you go. So there you see it. Matt Hardy says, "I see that the I can't even see it's too small." I see oh, that the Great the, War, yeah, Great War has become interpromotional. Okay, and now I have a mirror. Ah, so they got a little. Uh, and what's he say? Delete. What's the delete on the bottom? The uh, delete is the final deletion. Yeah, I know that. But what did he delete? He put something on there, like an address, like a uh, URL. I, I couldn't. It was too far away. I couldn't see it. Can you bring that back up, please, Brian? It looked like there was something on there. <clears throat> see on the bottom there? It says oh, delete. It's a YouTube link for the uh, video that... Uh... Oh, oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. And then Bray Wyatt comes back. This was last night, right? Bray Wyatt came with a couple of tweets. We've got one shot of one of them, and I'll read the other one oh, for I you. I only saw one. I didn't know there was two. The one that we got here, he says, uh, lest we forget... Without Bray Wyatt, perhaps no one would have been hashtag broken in the first place. Mm. Go ahead, lie, and say it isn't true. Hashtag I'm the way. Oh, wow. Now, right before Bray sent that out, he also sent out, love me or hate me. I'm the single most creative thing this industry has seen this century. Constantly imitated, but there is only one me. Wow. Hmm, that's a very powerful statement uh, by the uh, the Bray Wyatt, I'll tell you that. Uh, I'm a fan of Bray Wyatt. <laughs> And his family's history and uh, in the industry and his legacy and all that stuff, uh, for sure. And his brother and everything and with his grandfather, his dad, all that. Uh, that's a very powerful statement he said right there. I mean, that's... Uh, look, hey, I um, I respect both Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt for standing up for what they believe from a creative standpoint what is theirs. You know, and I, I it's, just, it's no different. It's no different, kids, than when I just, you know, went back and forth with, with The Rock about Hump Day promos, and The Rock's uh, Rock the promo. It's no different. It, and some people were bitching at me, like Rock's fans, like, I, I went over this. Oh, what are you, uh, what are you crying about, Taz? Leave it alone, you, know, you suck, nobody knows you, The Rock's a star, you're a jobber. You know, all this kind of stuff. And <clears throat> it's no different. What Bray and Matt are doing, you stand up for what you feel is yours. Some guys, let me tell you something, some guys in the business are copied, and uh, people steal their gimmick, and, and you know, and 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 all that stuff, or steal gimmicks from them. And a lot of the guys don't say nothing about it. They laugh it off, and they're like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. It's all good. Don't matter to me. People know the truth. I don't care. And that's great. To each his own. Me, Matt Hardy, and Bray Wyatt obviously have something in common. So, <laughs> no, you stand up for You stand up for yourself. So what Bray's saying, I, I don't know if I would go as far as saying, he, I, I'm paraphrasing what he said, that he's the most creative guy in this past century. And he's most creative. That's what he was saying. Copied more than anyone. I mean, I don't. I don't know about that, but he's definitely Bray Wyatt's definitely reinvented himself and created himself. Um, he's not a hack. He does things in a ring. He's different. He's original. And good God, I respect that. The man is very original. But so is Matt Hardy. I've known Matt for a long time. I've wrestled Matt and his brother and Matt and Jeff. They're creative guys, man. And they, you know. <laughs> They, they, they're, they're innovators of their own stuff, too. <clears throat> so, um, you know, the only thing I could tell you about Bray Wyatt, that, and I don't th I'm not saying the guy copied this, but I think that maybe I'm wrong on this. <sighs> I think he was inspired a little bit, his character, by a character called Wailing Mercy. I think... Wailing uh, Mercy. That, yeah. That was... That, well, God, I can see his face. I'm drawing a black. Dan, was it... Uh, Danny Spivey. Yeah. Thank I you. I think Dan Spivey helped Bray Wyatt develop Bray Wyatt. Too. Well, then there you go. I did not know that. I well, look at the so. captain bringing the info. Wow. Yes. Unbelievable. And they said you were just a job. <laughs> man, oh, man. They weren't completely wrong. <laughs> How do you have all your info? Like, where do you gather your info? This I remember reading a while ago. No one cares. Right, well, anyway, it's impressive. <laughs> so, so it's it's a great thing. And uh, I, I listen, man. I, the Wailing Mercy character was amazing. It got a push, but it wasn't like you know massive monster push. But back in those WWF days, it got a push, and it was awesome, no doubt. Now wait a minute. Oh God, I, I don't want to get beat up by hardcore fans here. Help me. I think Danny Spivey and Rotundo back in the day weren't they a team? 
Oh no, it was Wyndham. No, not Wyndham. It was you Rotunda. About the Varsity Club. No, no, no. That was Steiner. No, no. I'm drawing a blank. That was the Varsity Club. Was something different. That was years later. I'm talking about who the heck was Danny Spivey's partner back in the Spivey team was Sid Vicious. No, or, years before that. They or was it with like, Mean Mark, who was on the, the Undertaker? Uh, yeah. I, I ah, dude, I'm telling you, I think in WWF. Seeing Spivey and Rotunda teamed. Yeah. This, and a match from '89 that's coming up right no, now. No, that's that's kind of. I'm talking about the '80s. I'm that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Like around the '80s, Spivey. I just wonder it was somebody else. Oh man, I just can't recall who it was. But anyway, I look. The, the yeah, it says here Spivey was brought in team with Mike Rotunda is the U.S. Express. Did I not just say that? Yeah. Did I not just say that? Okay, thank you. So there's your connection there. So and you said it. You said it best yeah. that 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 Spivey helped a Bray. I did not know that by the way. So so uh, there are things I don't know. Believe it or not, it's rare, but it does happen, folks. It really does. I'm just letting you know it does happen. So, huh. Here's the thing. I, I have no problem at all, like I said, with these men standing up for what they feel creatively is theirs or who did it first. Some of you might think, ah, oh, this is so petty. It's not petty. It's not freaking petty. Men and women in this business who take the time to think of creative wrestling spots, words in their promo, the way they dress in the ring, men and women who do that, they're proud of that. And they get pissed if someone just takes their idea. And I'm telling you, I, I, and if, you, if you're if you one of the guys or girls that doesn't get up, upset and don't want to make waves and you don't want to stand up for what you, you know is yours, that's fine too. To each his own. You know what I'm saying?